Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I wanna talk about a very special release back in 1994. It's the CD releases for Alice in Chains' Jar of Flies. This was a very popular EP at the time. It debuted on the Billboard charts at number one, the first time an EP had ever done that. Uh, debuting at number one was quite the achievement, and so far it has gone on to sell over four million copies. It is a fantastic album, and when I was looking through my CD collection, I was reminded that this was a very unusual release at the time. Uh, there are several things that are very odd and very cool about this, and so I kind of want to cover it in this video. Now, at first glance, these probably look somewhat similar, but they are very different from each other. The first one is a more traditional release, but if you look at the spine very closely, you'll see actually that there are these plastic fake flies that have been inserted at the record label in the spine. I don't know how long they did that on this release because I've gone into record stores since and I've never seen one that has these in there. Maybe it was a promo that I picked up. To be quite honest, I don't remember. I'd love to know down in the comments if you have a copy of the physical version of Jar of Flies and yours has these plastic flies in the spine. I thought that was pretty cool, but that is nothing compared to what is on the second disc I have here. You open this up and immediately you see that there is a difference. So the normal CD release is on the top and then down on the bottom, it is slightly different looking, uh, different color there. And notice that it says something very interesting. It says CD plus. So that was a format that was supposed to be all the rage back in the day. Now this is long before the internet was widespread. You know, multimedia was the buzzword for a lot of things. And you see that Columbia Records here is planning on making this a massive format. And I think this is one of the first CDs that I ever had that had CD plus on it. Uh, it was also called other things as time went on, other names that a lot of people might recognize as CD Enhanced. Notice when I lift the tray, there is actually a second disc underneath that. So at the time this would ship with Windows drivers that you needed to view uh, all the content, all the extra content that is on this disc. This is so funny to me that this was required at the time. But again, like I said, this is very early days of CD-ROMs and multimedia. And so the vast majority of people may not have the software installed on their computer to check out the extra content on this. Now, the sucky part is if you want to check out some of this stuff today on a modern Windows or Mac OS, it's nearly impossible. This is kind of frozen in time. Now, when I put it into you know, my Mac, it'll show up as two separate disks, which is very common. Uh, same thing with Windows, but you can't launch it. There is nothing that I could do to actually get them to run. And so to check this out, we're gonna be using my actual Windows 98 machine, but it's not that simple because if you try to launch it with anything but 256 colors, you aren't gonna be able to see the videos. So you have to go and in this case, switch it to 256 colors. I bumped it down to 640 by 480 for this video. But once you have the right computer and the right resolution for your video card, it then launches the Sony Music and Columbia CD Plus format here. And then it goes into this multimedia thing that's just, you know, specifically designed for this album. And yes, it's incredibly cheesy by today's standards, but this was bleeding edge technology. And as we go through it, actually, you're gonna see that they packed quite a bit of stuff in here. We're gonna go ahead and jump into the Alice section of this. And basically this is just a history of the band. Now what's hilarious is that it's partially true and also partially false. And as you read through it, it's pretty funny because they talk about things that 
probably never happened or maybe they wish it happened or uh, it's just very sarcastic. There is a lot of personality in here. It's, it's pretty funny to read. You go into the video section and you have two music videos here in their entirety. You have no excuses as well as I stay away. And again, keep in mind, these are very early days for video compression. And so for them to fit the entire album on here, as well as videos, and this is not all the videos, by the way, there's also some interviews coming up here. Um, it's impressive. Again, it's pretty cool that they did this. You know, it's cool that they are kind of archived on the actual CD itself. And by the way, guys, I have to be very careful about playing the original music here. I assume if I was to try to do that for any length of time, I would probably get a copyright claim. I am very tempted though to try and re-upload all of the footage I captured here, maybe on my secondary channel to see if that's the case. It would be cool if I was able to share this completely as an archive with everybody out there. So I may actually try to do that. Here is the discography, and as you can see, they didn't have a ton of releases at the time. They basically just had two full-length albums, plus two EPs, and then the live facelift uh, VHS. But what's cool about that is if you click on that, you get a couple short little moments from that VHS, which, by the way, is awesome. I think I got that, actually. I think it was packaged with it, if I remember right. I remember going into a record store and uh, buying facelift and kind of in a, in a baggie with it was live facelift. So I still have the VHS actually. So again, it's pretty cool that they include little samples here for that. Here's the section where they have all the lyrics from the EP. Not much to say about this other than they do play in the background the song with it as well. So again, it's pretty cool that they include that in here. And then there's a bonus section over here called More Flies. And when you go in there, there are three additional things you can do, including clicking on the eye there, it will launch four uh, video interviews that they did around 1991. Maybe this, the fourth one is in 1992. Um, but basically it's really cool to see these, you know, of the band at the time, sitting there just chilling out, kind of talking about their influences, talking about fame and the success that they're having at the time. Again, it's a really cool snapshot of the band. We're gonna to try to keep doing different things and having fun with it as long as we but, can. But, but there's no plan, there's no plan. It's just, it just happens. Well, actually, there is a plan. We didn't let you in on it. Okay, I'm the new guy, so. We're gonna do the, the whole, <laughs> gym. well, we're, we're gonna do the Jim Morrison trip and leave you holding the bag, have them do all the interviews for us. Ah, uh, okay. My niche. <laughs> if you click on the ear, it takes you to a section where they have a bunch of uh, interviews with radio stations. And it, it's taken over several months, it seems, because it seems like it's a couple different radio stations here, but they have uh, eight different questions that they they took from audience members. People called in and asked them all sorts of questions about their influences and um, you know, kind of all the things that people would ask about, including where they got the name Alice in Chains. Name for Bond. Ah, that would be uh, Mr. Lane Staley's fault. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he uh, it was it, it was like a joke, I think, like a long time ago. He was jamming with some buddies or whatever, and they they had this idea to call a band Alice in Chains and wear drag and play like Slayer tunes. <laughs> so uh, we got stuck with it. And then finally, there's a link to online, which does not work for me because my Windows 98 machine is not on the internet. Uh, it's never been on the internet. It should never be on the internet because it is so old. It'd probably get a virus in five seconds. And then the final thing I want to mention, and I've shown this on my channel before, but you know, the cool releases for this EP didn't stop there. So you see that I have the original release for this uh, on vinyl. And what's cool about it is that they package both EPs together. So it's a gatefold and one side is Sap, the original, and the second one is Jar of Flies. What's really cool about this is that if you look at the fourth side, they etched in their logo on there. So this is non-playable, it's just for show. But again, very cool that they did this. So anyways, guys, that's a quick look at the amazing release of Alice in Chains' Jar of Flies way back in 1994. 
Such a great album. I still listen to it all the time. I still think it's one of, well, it's certainly one of the best EPs ever released, but also I love every single song on here. Uh, several of them actually I play on guitar when I bust out my acoustic guitar. Just some great chords, some great melodies. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic for a reason. But I would love to know what you thought of this video because I do have a large physical music collection like this and there are a bunch of oddities in there. This is not the only CD Plus that I have in my collection. I have several of them as well as just some other odd stuff. So if you guys are interested in seeing some of this on my channel, please let me know down below. And as always, I wanna thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.